Dear all, welcome to a basic guide for ASLT. I am Mohamed Salman Chukhan, science communicator at Food and Details. While doing my research in NPD at various organizations, I came across ASLT. By then, I couldn't get a concise or compiled information which can be a guide for the same. So, I thought that whatever I learned in the due course of time should be shared with, to, uh, shared with the food tech community. Before starting, I would like to thank Suresh Chandra, Head Food on Details, for interesting me and giving me a, such a wonderful opportunity to deliver these learnings. I hope this can be a basic guide for a, anyone working with ASLT. So let's begin. Let's start by understanding what is shelf life. I bet that most of you might have a incom an incomplete understanding of shelf life. Food and Agriculture Organization has defined shelf life as the period during which product maintains its microbial safety, microbiological safety, regulatory compliance and sensory qualities at a specific storage condition. Usually these storage conditions are expressed as temperature and RH. Here at the right hand side of the uh, slide I have given a table which explains the factor affecting the shelf life. I would like to explain briefly about two factors which are the major factors in shelf life. First, product formula. It's obvious that a recipe with more dry ingredients will have higher shelf life. Second, product shape and size. It is, it is to be noted that more the surface area, less the shelf life. Selection of simple, fast, reliable parameter is the first and foremost step for a successful ASLT. For example, for a meat product, the major parameters to be looked up to, uh, looked up to during the shelf life would be the microbial safety rather than the regulatory or sensory attributes. Whereas for a packaged product, it is microbial safety regulatory complaints and sensory attributes so according to food food type the parameters are to be selected most of the time we get a small confusion between expiry date and best before date so before going into details of ASLT let's understand what is the difference between expiry date and best before date Expiry date is nothing but after, after the specific date, the food is not at all safe to consume. Usually, expiry date is given for any uh, high, highly perishable producers like meat or packaged milk, like pasteurized milk. So, expi expiry date and use by date is having same meaning. Whereas, best before date is a date after which the food company is not assuring that specific quality of the product usually best before date is given for any packaged food products the main example is bread now let's understand the types of shelf life testing here we will be focused on only the shelf life testing methods which is for follow, uh, followed by the food industry so the shelf life testing can be classified into two as direct and indirect so direct method, in direct method, the products are kept in recommended storage condition and samples are drawn for a long period. The main disadvantage of this method is that it is time and resource consuming. It is very well suited for products with short life, short shelf life. In indirect method, uh, the shelf life is predicted without a full length storage trial so it is very well useful for long long shelf life product so indirect method can be classified into um, into two which is a, 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 which are accelerated shelf life testing and predictive modeling as you all know aslt is nothing but accelerated shelf life testing aslt is basically deriving its concept from uh, adenius equation the details of Arrhenius equation will be explained in the next com coming slides. 
the main concept of aslt is that the rise in temperature increases the deterioration rate which in turn reduces the time required for shelf life testing it is uh, very well explained in the uh, relation which is given in the slide this methodology can be uh, used for any sort of reaction be it physical chemical or microbiological or sensorial with any sort of reaction rate for your kind knowledge aslt uh, is uh, also available in multiple factor where in which we are we are will be uh, having multiple factor for example uh, temperature and rh coming into play to to have that uh, understanding in this equation tries to explain the temperature dependence of a uh, reaction now testing with the basic equation that is k is equal to k0 e raised to minus ea by rt would require us to find ea or k0 at every interval so in order to simplify the concept of q10 has introduced q10 is nothing but the temperature coefficient when the temperature is increased by 10 degrees celsius so q10 is trying to understand how the reaction changes now i believe that all of you are familiar with the basic concepts of aslt and related concepts now let's dive into aslt the process of aslt can be classified as three phases or three stages they are pre aslt collection of imc and cmc determination of drt pre aslt stage is nothing but the preparatory stage here one uh, one should find the critical parameter which is this is a important step for example usually in the shelf life assessment of a in a shelf life assessment of any packaged drink we select vitamin c as an indicator to understand because uh, vitamin c uh, would be labeled in the uh, label of the drink vitamin c is uh, taken as an indicator because it uh, degrades very fast and the uh, testing is super easy second step is to uh, obtain representative sample and keep those samples uh, at a, uh, ambient condition and these samples would be reference next step would be uh, making a collection frequency so the collection frequency can be of two approach one would be equally divided interval like uh, weekly twice a month or monthly or even uh, even the sample number of sample can be uh, less in the starting and it can be increased uh, throughout the uh, uh, shelf life uh, to, uh, throughout the end of the shelf life next step would be making uh, making of data collection chart collection of imc and cmc this step is basically done to a, a new product to understand the cmc of the product cmc is nothing but critical moisture content so cmc in similar terms is the moisture content at which the product is just unacceptable this step basically helps in the selection of best packaging material the uh, steps are as follows find the imc by hot air oven method i believe that everyone knows this method second thing is that exposing this new sample in an accelerated condition so uh, the accelerated condition means the temperature would be 10 to 13 degrees cel celsius higher than the average supply chain temperature and rh would be 90 90 percentage rs so 90 percentage rh is nothing but the uh, it is the rh at which the microbial growth will be uh, fastest now find the difference between imc and cmc then you will get the maximum possible per, maximum maximum permissible moisture then this can help you out to design or select best packaging material stage 2 determination of drt is the real essence of aslt here we find the uh, desired real time nothing but drt the first and foremost step here is to find a uh, to uh, to load the sample and run the test then samples are collected based on the frequency decided in the pre aslt stage then the test uh, the required test is performed for all required pa parameters for initial and uh, the collected sample after the required interval now 
these uh, these observations are recorded in the data collect collection chart which was designed in the pre slt stage now continue the step 2 3 and 4 till the sample fails the number of days or months taken the taken to the product to fail is known as aatd nothing but accelerated aging aging time duration now find the q10 for each interval and then get the average of it q10 can be found out by the equation given here now from q10 get aar that is accelerated aging rate now by using aar and aatd we will get drt thus we can conclude the study now to understand the calculation let's have a case study so for now the aslt is done for a health mix the major assumptions made are imc is 0.8 percentage cmc is 2.2 percentage store storage temperature is 28 degrees celsius elevated temperature is 38 degrees celsius and aatd is 90 days the major parameter here considered for this uh, test is uh, vitamin c the first table represents the vitamin c concentration at each condition and frequency and second table represents the rate of change of vitamin c from initial to mid and mid to final this rate of change is just by a mere subtraction for example when 108.7 is subtracted from 110 we get 1.3 now q10 is found for uh, for each condition for example it should be uh, found for initial to mid and mid to final then we should take the q10 average and it is uh, repeated for the accelerator condition too now from q10 average we should find uh, aar by the equation given above and from aar and aatd we can find drt for example the uh, q10 was found here as uh, 3.923 and from from that we found that aar as 3.923 because uh, uh, the temperature variation is just 10 degree uh, 10 degrees celsius and drt was found as uh, 3.9 Three uh, nine two three into ninety, which is uh, nine uh, three, uh, which is almost one year. Now I would like to share some important tips to conduct great shelf life testing, which is basically out of my experiences. Please complete ASLT. Never assume that the shelf life would be so and so because this can lead to a big disaster. Second thing is that make minimum eight collection point. Third, uh, please mind that Q10 can change even at a, a small uh, formulation change. So, Q10 should be found at every reformulation done. And uh, it should be always kept in mind that elevated temperature should be uh, 10 to 13 degrees Celsius above the optimum supply chain temperature. Thanks a lot guys for listening this session. Uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, Suresh Chandra for giving me such an opportunity. I would be extremely happy to address your queries. You can mail your queries uh, to the email given below. Once again, thank you. Thank you one and all.